On the news this evening, Minister of Works Engineer Omai warns contractors against the use of substandard materials. Contractor of Orofia Ali Stream Road will be given seven days to mobilize back to the site. President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, Ugoji, calls on Supreme Court's judges to be cautious. Brazilian President Silva questions country's membership in the United Nations. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Edinburgh State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Details of the news, I am Friska Wonko. Minister of Works, Engineer Dave Omai, has said that most of the bitumen imported into Nigeria are fake or of low quality, warning contractors handling federal roads across the country against using them. Speaking at Otuwacha Anambra East Cancer Area, while inspecting the Otuwacha Uzam Ibaji Kogi Road, the minister also said that the era of surface dressing of shoulders on federal roads has come to an end, and also warned contractors against continuing the practice. Correspondent Chibuzo Bidike filed on this report. Of all federal roads under construction in the state is part of the minister's activities on his visit to Anambra. The works minister also visited the failed portions on Amansi and Amobia Aziz of the Enugu Onicha Expressway. Engineer Omai explained that under the president Bola Tinubu administration, government must ensure that quality for every penny spent is realized and advise contractors handling different federal government projects to stick to the agreed standards and timeliness or risk having their contracts terminated. He argued that most Nigerian roads were failing mainly because of bad asphalt placed on them and advised that concrete pavements can sustain the country's weather conditions and lack of maintenance remain preferably unsustainable. The minister therefore directed the contractor handling one side of the Enugu on the Expressway to use concrete in the road construction to save costs and ensure durability. What you need to do is to fill the whole of this place in layers with uh, foot sheet rollers. We remove this drainage. He also expressed dismay over the time being wasted in the construction of the road, thereby subjecting the people of the region and road users to untold hardship and economic sabotage. At Ubo, in Dunukofa local government area of Elugu Onicha Expressway, a resident of the community, Mr. Chukwode Wansinoke, appreciated the minister for the prompt inspection visit and called for timely completion of the road, promising that the community will give necessary support for the completion of the work. Seeing the shadow, the shadow of the court, very tight. But thank God you are doing it yourself. You turn it to your state, you are doing it for the whole of Nigeria. From Ubo, Shibuzo Bidike, ABS News. Contractor handling the 2.5 kilometers of Rafia Ali Stream Road, Ubo, in Dunaka Feloka government area, has been given seven days to mobilize back to size. Given the directive after inspecting the abandoned road project, the Minister of Works, Engineer Dave Mai, questioned the contractor on why he abandoned the road, even after receiving huge amounts of money from the federal government. Correspondent Ngozi Obileri has the details. Why he frowned at the claims by the contractor that Gully erosion has taken major parts of the road, a reason why the contractor left the site. When he gathered from the contractor that only 500 meters have been asphalted, Engineer Omahi advised the contractor to commence earth work on the remaining portions of the road and to report back to him through the Anambra State Commissioner for Works for further direction on how to complete the project. He maintained that the error of collecting monies for road projects from government and abandoning them soon after would not be condoned in the Bola made Tinubu regime as he said that every contractor must account for every kobo they were paid to do any road contract for government. Whatever that we begin to embark a more enduring uh, you know, concrete pavement that can uh, sustain the, uh, our weather condition and the lack of uh, maintenance. Um, I directed and I want all the directors to go. No more surface dressing of any of our shoulders. 
engineer Mahi said that the acceptable duration for every federal road project will no longer be more than four years. In the same vein, the federal government has called for the redesigning of the over 30 kilometers Otuacha Nzam Ebaji Kogi Road awarded in 2008. The Minister of Works, Engineer Dave Umahi, stated this when he inspected works already done on the road since 2008 and the ones remaining. The Minister expressed sadness over the condition of the road, which he said has come bad. Engineer Umahi noted that the old method of laying stone base, MC1, and then asphalt no longer stands the test of time due to the type of weather and lack of maintenance culture of the people of the country. He recommended concrete pavement with two meters asphalt on top as the best way to ensure that the road lasts more than 50 years after construction. The minister said henceforth there will no longer be surface dressing on shoulders of federal roads across the country so as to get it right. The shoulders on S125 uh, surface dressing, they don't last. They can last six months. I've directed in the Ministry of Works no more shoulder works with uh, surface dressing throughout the country. The over 30 kilometers Otuacha Nzam Kogi Road awarded to Niger Cat Construction Company has five bridges and will be a major shortcut to Lokoja Kogi State when completed. I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. As endorsements continue to follow her healthy living project, Edinburgh Governor's wife, Mrs. Nonye Saludo, has explained that one of the primary targets of the crusade is to establish a new approach to health and make moral values an involuntary way of life among children and youth in the state. Mrs. Saludo stated this while speaking with newsmen in Oka maintained that by taking the crusade to schools first by way of healthy living, her goal is to instill an early stage awareness of what living rights is by equipping school children with the right information and practical experience. The governor's wife stated that while active plans are already ongoing to incorporate primary school pupils, women and youth into the movement, she's looking forward to a time when every vision of the campaign would have become a household practice in Anambra State. She noted that one of the visions of a healthy living club is to reform attitudinal and moral values, beginning with children and lend strong effort to fundamental social problems, including drug use among children, cultism, child trafficking, and domestic violence, among others. Mrs. Saluda further noted that a club manual, which derives its action plan from six paramount pillars, have been carefully formulated to cover important areas of health, as well as vital social issues. She also explained how the NGO is being funded, stating that while most members of volunteers grant donations from individuals and associations that do not have any form of political affiliation with the Anambra State Government, have also helped the crusade. Ihiala Progressive Union, Oka Branch, has applauded the managing director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, Sachido Obidiawu, for sustaining the promotion of Igbo language and culture, which the organization is known for. Correspondent Chibuzo Obidike was there and now reports. The group gave the applause when they paid a courtesy visit to the ABS chief executive in his office in Oka. The president of the branch, Mr. Odeze, explained that the union was founded to propagate love, togetherness, and welfare of Ihiala indigents who live in Oka and said the visit is for them to extend their hands of fellowship to the ABS towards driving development in the community and the local government area. Mr. Odeze commended Sachido for his doggedness and commitment in the media industry, especially in propagating the culture and lifestyle of communities in the state. Receiving the delegation, Sachido thanked the group for the show of love while explaining that his vision is to sustain the memories when ABS was used as a platform to tell different unique stories of different Anambra communities in order to celebrate the culture and heritage of those communities. The ABS MD assured them of the continuous support of the station and told community stakeholders and well-meaning individuals that the ABS is always ready for partnership that are geared towards promoting community ideas and heritage. You're welcome. I'm here and I'm here for, for everybody. Especially if there are things we can do together. We have a governor who you know insists on excellence. I'm sure it's all about projecting the image of our people. So when 
when I sit here and I know I have people like you, it gives me, you know, confidence, you know, and courage to be able to, you know, do my work without uh, fear. In Oka, Chibuzo Bidike, ABS News. The president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria, CBCN, Archbishop Lucius Ugoji, has called on Supreme Court judges to be cautious for ruling on the February 23, 2023 presidential election results, saying they should neither bend the law nor seek to satisfy the whims and caprices of any party. Archbishop Ugoji will make the call while declaring open the second plenary session of CBCN for the year 2023 at Holy Trinity Catholic Church, Maitama, Abuja, said that the introduction of the bimodal voter accreditation system, BVAS, Nigerians stripped out a mass to cast their votes while looking forward to a free, fair and credible election and hoping that their votes will count. ABS Abuja Bureau Chief, Princess Ekwi Ajidei has the details. Despite reassurances by the INEC to deliver credible general elections in 2023, the elections fell short of the people's expectations and as well as moral and legal standards, hence the confidence of citizens in the 2023 electoral process was eroded by the many people's and irregularities evident before, during, and after the elections. According to him, many national and international observers had already confirmed that the general elections were flawed by threats, intimidation, violence, spilling of blood, poor logistics arrangement, inducement, impunity, as well as lack of transparency, manipulation of results, abuse of the power of incumbency, alleged glitches, and outright rigging. We also pray and hope for a day in our nation when election results will be finally decided at the polling units and not at the courts. Earlier in a homely at the opening mass heralding the week-long activities of the Bishop's Conference, the Bishop of Abuja Catholic Diocese, Archbishop Ignatius Kaigama, called on Nigerians to be promoters of peaceful coexistence on all fronts. The Bishop, who lamented the many victims of violent conflicts, people sacked from their homes owing to nefarious activities of terrorists, bandits, and kidnappers, urged the citizenry to seek solutions to to the multidimensional problems of the nation and reach out to the ones in need. Archbishop Kaigama called on Nigerians to face the real problems of the country rather than using religion as a weapon of violence or taking lives at the slightest provocation. He called on government at all levels to caution religious leaders who make inflammatory statements on social media and as well as ensure that in distributing palliatives, what is meant for the hungry truly gets to them. The Apostolic Nuncio to Nigeria, Archbishop Antonio Guido Filipazzi, who has been posted to Poland, decried the news of the barbaric murder of a seminarian of Kafanshan diocese, described it as one of the latest crimes committed in Nigeria against people of all ethnicities, religions, and social classes. He said, although the civil authorities have the primary duty to protect the life and property of every citizen without distinction, unfortunately in Nigeria, this still seems far from being realized. The Apostolic Nuncio expressed some concerns about the future of the church in Nigeria and recommended that attention be paid to certain aspects to be corrected or certain tendencies to be avoided. I hope that this CBCN assembly will offer valuable contribution to the life of the church and society in Nigeria. In Abuja, Princess Ifi Ajide reporting. Brazil's president, Lula da Silva, has redrawn his personal assurance that Russian President Vladimir Putin would not be arrested if he attends next year's Group of 20 summit in Rio de Janeiro, saying it would be up to the judiciary to decide. President Silva also questioned Brazil's membership in the United Nations War Crimes Court, saying that emerging countries often sign things that are detrimental to them. Putin missed the CSG20 gathering in the Indian capital, New Delhi, 
avoiding possible political opprobrium at any risk of criminal detention under an international criminal court ICC warrant. In March, the ICC announced an arrest warrant for Putin over the war crime accusation of unlawfully deporting Ukrainian children. The Kremlin denies the accusations, insisting that a warrant against Putin is void. Sports. After scoring his 20th goal for Nigeria on Sunday, Super Eagle striker Victor Osihen stirred the confidence of Nigerians who believe that an Apoli man will soon become the all time highest goal scorer for the country. The 24 year old scored a hat trick in the 6 0 thrashing of Satomi and Principe in Uyo on Sunday and took his tally to 20 goals in 26 games, needing 17 more goals to match Rashidi Yakini's long standing record of 37 goals. Osehen has just moved past Abafemi Martins, who scored 18 goals, and Ike Chuku Uche on 19 goals, and stayed just behind Yakubu Aibeni, 21, Shegun Odebwami, 23, and Yakini, 37. Osehen was just nominated alongside Aisha Toshala for the Ballon d'Or Award, finished as a top scorer in the Afghan 2023 qualifiers with 10 goals. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS in many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page, follow at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow on Twitter at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this evening, a recap of the main points. Minister of Works, Engineer Omai, has warned contractors against the use of substandard materials. Contractor of Orofia Ali Stream Road, war has been given seven days to mobilize back to the site. President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, Ugoji, has called on Supreme Court judges to be cautious. Brazilian President Silvia has questioned country's membership in the United Nations. To end the news, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of Anambra State's economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that ends the evening news at this time on ABS television. Thanks for watching. I am Priska Wonko. Good evening and have a wonderful night.